mean, I was shot, and uh, I was in the ambulance, and uh, just it, it changed everything about who I was. I was a kid. I was uh, I was a, I was a dick. I was a dick. I, uh, I was, you know, I was a funny kid. I didn't care. I didn't take anything seriously. That's how I was my whole life. I was a class clown. And then all of a sudden, like, this just paradigm shift happened where now everything is way too fucking serious. When I first started doing comedy, I worked in nightclubs. I would do, like, the door at some places. I would do the list, the cash register. Just odd jobs to make money. But my buddy was a club promoter. He got me the jobs. Um, he would just make cash. He would just make... You know, in a night, thousands of dollars in cash, and he would collect it from the register and leave with it. So he was always kind of a target. He put a box of flyers in the back, and then he went around to the driver's side of his Jeep, and I went around to the passenger side of the Jeep. And a typical New Yorker just always kind of look over your shoulder. I just kind of looked over my shoulder, and I saw this guy in a mask, gloves, hood on, just kind of walking slowly towards the car. And I just had this instinct that this was about to happen, so I tried to like, get in the car as fast as I can and close the door. But he just sort of, I saw him speed up after I, our eyes met. He kind of started walking faster and I, he tried, I tried to close the door but his body just slammed into my arm and my arm went that way and the door kind of stayed open and he was in the car from his waist up. He was on me and he had a gun in his right hand and I just grabbed his arm and I, you know, I guess I pushed it down and he fired. It was just the loudest noise. Like, and I could smell, you smell the gunpowder. It was just the loudest noise. It reverberated off the walls of the car. It was like my ears were ringing. But happy gun appreciation day, huh? <laughs> Yesterday was gun appreciation. How did you guys celebrate? <laughs> I've actually been shot. I was actually shot with a gun, so I kind of celebrated it like single people do on Valentine's Day. <laughs> I just cried. <laughs> that is holidays not for me, is it? <laughs> gun appreciation day. I just picture like a bunch of rednecks just staring at their gun in the living room. Just... <laughs> Thank you, girl. Thank you for protecting me from the 80 people that live in my town who I know by name. <laughs> and I remember I made a decision. I made a conscious decision to pretend, even though I wasn't sure if I was shot, if that makes sense. I made a conscious decision to pretend that I was more hurt than I was. Uh, that I was like dead, because I didn't want him to shoot more, you know? And if I had had a gun, which is the argument, like, if I had had a gun, how am I gonna pull out the gun? This shit is happening, his gun's out. If I had tried to pull out my gun, he would have got scared and he would have shot more times. I made a conscious decision to act more hurt so he wouldn't shoot again out of fear for himself and his safety, you know? And I just, I remember I kind of slid down out of the car into his arms and down to the floor, which was an act. And I think he maybe kicked me twice, maybe out of frustration or whatever, and then he just ran. Because my buddy was ran out of the car and was screaming, help, help. You know, my buddy shot or whatever he was screaming. And there was, you know, there's people around. It was New York City. This was in Soho, an old club called Envy that's not there anymore, on Hudson and Barrack. If you have a gun and someone pulls out a gun first, you know what kind of advantage they have over you? I'll explain it. Like, if you tried to play one-on-one -on -one with Shaquille O'Neal, <laughs> that's like kind of like the disparity. Like if I pull my gun out, because you know how fast the bullet travels? Like, I don't care if you're a squirrel on PCP and cocaine. <laughs> if I point my gun at you and you're like, wait, I got a fucking gun, you're done. Like, you're gone, you're dead. You're dead. Like I got shot and if I had a gun, I'd be fucking dead. Because like the shit's already happening, you know, the gun's out, you can't be like, hold up dude, let's make this fair, okay? I don't know if you watch westerns. <laughs> I don't know if you have any decency as a gun owner, but why don't you go back 12 paces and we do this like men, huh? <laughs> and time is sort of an illusion, like it isn't a dream, like it seems like, you know, uh, uh, four hours has gone by, when really it's just one second, because it was just one second or two seconds, this whole thing was going on, but my brain was able to deal with him, and at the same time just have all these like, what I thought were like last thoughts, and you think of what you do, you, it's a cliche, but you think about um, the people you love and stuff, it really puts things in perspective. I remember getting up on stage, and there was nothing funny in me. I really, it was like kryptonite, I could, nothing was funny. 
and that was it. I quit comedy. I, I was done. I, I had nothing more to say as that kid anymore. And now I had to like go learn about like the horror of life, like the fucking Buddha. I was like, oh shit, life sucks, and you can die at any moment. That what's the point of trying to achieve something if it can just be taken from you right in the middle of your dream? Like I, I started doing comedy. I was like, this is amazing. I can make a living from this. And then I was like, oh shit, this almost just ended. And uh, I gotta go find out what life's about, man. So I, uh, I ended up doing 9/11 disaster relief. First client I had just cried in the little cubicle we met in about his buddies that he lost. He worked at Windows in the World, and he just was crying. And I was sitting there. I never did the feel. I'm just like, I didn't know what to do. I was, I just listened and sat there, just like an idiot. And he just cried to me. And I dealt with that for two and a half years. And then I started having panic attacks, anxiety attacks. So I was dealing with all these people's pain and tragedy and I was just immersed in fucking tragedy. And then I worked with uh, formerly homeless and mentally ill people and I slowly started doing comedy again. It was funny though because the bullet was in my body for all, like a couple of years because they just left it in there. It was too dangerous to go get it. It was too deep in there. And then uh, finally, it, it, like the, uh, your, uh, your body will push a foreign object to the surface. So slowly, after a couple of years, it came right to the surface. And so finally, I went to a surgeon to get it removed. And I had to go get x-rays. And I'm, this was the area that the gun was in. It's like right here. So I went to get x-rays. And at the time, I was doing social work, working with like a lot of older Christian black women. And I went in the middle of the day to get the x-rays at lunch. And I came back with the x-rays. And everyone knew the story. And everyone was like waiting for me. They couldn't wait to see the x-rays. They wanted to see the bullet. And I hadn't looked at them yet. They were in an envelope. So, uh, and I didn't know that the x-rays fucking produced such detail. <laughs> <laughs> so all these women gathered around like, come on, praise Jesus. Let's look at his bullet. I pulled it out, just slapped it against the window, and my sad little dick was just hanging off to the right. It was just an outline of my dick, just like a police sketch of my limp penis. So we all kind of walk around with a, what I called at the time, when I, when I thought about it, benign denial. We do. It's like we walk around thinking, this will never happen to me. And you have to have that. That's why I call it benign denial. You need that to be able to function, you know. But it, 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 it can. <laughs> and for me, it did happen. And now it can happen at any time because my cherry had been broken in that way. And that was, that was tough. I guess that's what they call PTSD. So that was fun. That took about eight years of therapy. But, you know, we, we made it. <laughs> I'm still here. <laughs> Guns don't kill people. People kill people. That's their motto. Which is a good point. You do have to give the NRA that. People do kill people with fucking guns. <laughs> That's how that works. <laughs> Have you ever been walking late at night in a bad neighborhood and you're like, be careful, I heard there was a lot of robbery and death by karate over here. <laughs> so if you're walking late at night, make sure you bring your Eastern wisdom with you. <laughs>